What's on your radar, Ryan? If you spend much time keeping up with the vaccine skeptical corners of the internet, you've probably come across a claim that's been getting extraordinary traction lately. Before I tell you what that claim is, a quick word for our YouTube overlords and anybody else who lacks common sense. The claims I'm about to share with you are false. They are baseless. They are wrong. Choose your description and I'll demonstrate fairly easily to you why they're wrong. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to tell you what those claims are. So consider this a trigger warning. If you're not able to hear a claim without instantly believing it, even when presented with evidence that it's wrong, you should click out of this video and go watch the next one. Okay, so for everybody who's still here, the claim started with an article in a local Indiana paper reporting that Scott Davison, CEO of a $100 billion insurance company ironically called One America, had recently said that excess deaths are up 40%. It's called the Center Square and it's funded by the Franklin News Foundation and it tries to fill the gap created by the collapse of local news. The article was then tweeted out by Edward Dowd, a former finance professional for BlackRock who's grown a following in the vaccine skeptical world. The actuaries are on to it, he said, arguing that this was proof that the vaccine was killing people in huge numbers. Dowd tells his followers, quote, I can't emphasize how big of a deal this is. Actuaries just assess risk with math. They will be pushing the costs onto employers. Don't trust VAERS? Well, the actuaries trust math, so they don't care what you think, unquote. From there, Zero Hedge, which many of you are no doubt familiar with, turned his tweet into an article and it blew up on the right. Doctors Robert Malone and Peter McCullough, the vaccine skeptic doctors, gave an additional boost. Don't take it from me, here's Dowd explaining how the local news to viral pipeline worked even after the company had tried to explain the remarks were being mischaracterized. That insurance company then tried to retract that, and so where do we stand with that? So that was One America. I discovered that and I got it on Zero Hedge. I gave it to Dr. Malone and Steve Kirsch and they blew it up and we got, you know, they, they had more um, influence than me and they were able to boost the signal. Zero Hedge boosted it for me. If we're going to be generous, we could say that everybody who championed this claim didn't watch the full video of the CEO's remarks. If we're not going to be generous, we'd say they're lying to you. So let's look at what else the CEO said. Asked by a panelist to elaborate, he explained it this way. Yeah, and just by under, I'm not suggesting that the COVID deaths are uh, undercounted, uh, uh, but the pandemic-related deaths indicate much larger uh, uh, death rates among working-age people than simply COVID on the death certificate uh, would imply. Mm -hmm. So it is the what we're seeing um, is that people get COVID, they kind of recover, and then they they die from a a a um, uh, some sort of disease mechanism that was impacted by the fact that they got COVID in the first place. And so we're seeing this, this uh, uh, kind of massive number of deaths, and it's across the industry. This is not just one American numbers. This is consistent across every carrier in every state that does business in this industry. So yes, we would, we would say that the pandemic-related deaths are, are much larger than what you're seeing in the news as the official specific COVID deaths, where, where COVID was this, the proximate cause of death on the death certificate. Um, so it's a much, much larger number than that. Again, 40, 40 to 46 percent up just in, in the third quarter alone from a Delta wave. So in other words, if you have some sort of comorbidity and you get COVID and survive, what life insurance companies are seeing is that a lot of those people do in fact, quote unquote, recover from COVID, but they die of that underlying disease not long after. That's not recorded as a COVID death, and it, and it shouldn't be. But these insurance companies are trying to figure out why that person died, and they're looking at COVID as a causal factor. So let's take another look at that, Pete, uh, at that Mc Dr. McCullough tweet, and note this part, quote, there is only one brand new potentially fatal exposure that shaded in the second half of 2021. Dr. McCullough thinks his followers are idiots. Can anybody think of a new, potentially fatal exposure that shaded in the second half of 2021 other than the vaccine? Yes, of course, you win. The Delta variant. And that's exactly what the CEO chalked it up to, explicitly. Here's Davison again. 40, 40 to 46% up 
just in, in the third quarter alone from a Delta wave. From the Delta wave, his exact words. So either McCullough doesn't care enough about getting his facts right, that he didn't even watch the talk, or McCullough watched it and deliberately lied. I'm not actually sure which is worse, except in this case, we have pretty strong evidence he straight up lied because somebody replied to him on Twitter with a key clip of the video showing that he was mischaracterizing what the insurance executive said, and McCullough's response was not to apologize and take it down, but instead he blocked the guy. The user sent me this screenshot. So yes, when McCullough was presented with evidence that his claim was 180 degrees wrong, he responded by suppressing that evidence. This is your anti-censorship king? If that's not infuriating enough, it gets worse. McCullough and his allies have been using the man's remarks to spread the lie that insurance company actuaries are starting to realize that getting vaccinated increases your risk of dying and are going to price that into the cost of insurance. That's not just wrong. Again, it's 180 degrees opposite of what he said. Here's Davison. And for One America, uh, we expect the costs of this are going to be well over $100 million. And this is our smallest business. So it's having a huge impact on that. that those costs will, will trickle towards other employers over time because uh, premiums are starting to go up. So it will cost more for employers and most of us in the industry are starting to target and to add uh, premium loads onto uh, employers that are based in counties that have low vaccination rates. It's just typically what we would do for underwriting when you have a risk factor like that. So the reason this story caught fire on the right is because insurance actuaries are indeed cold-blooded creatures. They invest heavily in figuring out what factors are more likely to cause you health problems so they can price that in. They don't care if you smoke or drink every night because they have some moral objection to that behavior. They want to know because smoking might kill you, and if you smoke, then you have to pay more for your life insurance. Here's Dowd making that exact point. And what you need to understand about insurance companies, they make their money giving whole life policies because they can predict death rates, which are pretty steady. You know, the, the death rates all around the globe are, are not fluctuating wildly. They just don't. What's interesting is that nine hours after Dowd first posted that article, he finally shared a clip of the CEO speaking, and he accurately noted that the insurance company believed the opposite of what he had been claiming they believed. So deep in his thread, he linked to the CEO remarks and included this video. So within nine hours of the story going viral on the right, Dowd, the guy who kicked it off, realized he had mischaracterized it and instead of correcting, just said, well, the insurance company is wrong, which is the same thing this crowd has been saying the entire time. So the anti-vax crowd often refers to itself as on a journey for truth. And when they found something that confirms their prior belief about the vaccine, they share it as widely as possible. If they come across evidence that cuts the other way, they find a way to explain that it's corrupt or just wrong. That's not a hunt for truth. And what's also revealing about this moment is the way in which people like McCullough play the same song, but play it in a different tune depending on whether they're talking to a broad audience or to a more narrow group where they can really let it rip. Notice that in his tweet, McCullough didn't specifically say that the vaccine was killing people. Instead, he left it as innuendo saying that there was only one thing that could have caused this, knowing everybody would know what he meant. Behind the closed doors of places like Infowars, though, that's the Alex Jones conspiracy fest, McCullough's much less careful. Here's how he phrased things on that show. The vaccine is far worse than the respiratory illness. So I understand that in a world gone mad like it has, it's hard to know who to trust and probably a mistake to put all of your trust in one person or one network. But if people actively lie to you and you continue to believe them in spite of learning that, then at some point you have nobody to blame but yourself. So to repeat, the insurance company found in its research that COVID was actually responsible for more deaths than were being reported by looking case by case to figure out what was going on. According to their analysis, more vaccination would mean fewer deaths. The entire ecosystem of the anti-vax world told you that that same insurance company had found the exact opposite. That was a lie. And what's interesting is that both the AP and Polit I think it was PolitiFact or somebody else did little tiny fact checks of this very early when, it came, when Malone and Zero Hedge were pushing it. And, and they said, this isn't true. 
wasn't even a speed bump. And, and I read their fact checks, and their fact checks are kind of annoying in the sense they're like, they just quote like an expert saying it's not true. Which, if, if you're skeptical of the experts already, right, you're not going to believe, that. Not gonna believe yeah. those experts. I think you, what you have to do is you have to go to the root of where they got this. It's like Dowd got it from the insurance company. Here's what the insurance company actually said. So you can believe or not believe the insurance company, but his source is the insurance company. So without that source, he has nothing. He's just a back to where he was before, a guy just saying things. Yeah, look, this is a problem with uh, a certain kind of person who is rightly distrustful of the mainstream media, as I am, as you often are, because they do get things wrong. Yeah. The New York Times gets things wrong. The Washington Post gets things wrong. The AP gets things wrong. Um, you, you should be wary, always. I've been very critical of their COVID coverage. But because, just because mainstream institutions are flawed doesn't mean that every crazy person who is anti-mainstream right. institutions is right about everything. Often, there are kernels of truth to things they're saying, just as there are, there are a lot of truths to what the mainstream institutions are saying, but they have biases and get things wrong. But you can't, it is just as you said, it's, it's so strange to hear people say, you know, don't, you know, be skeptical, you know, right. uh, challenge everything, you know, expand your horizon, say, oh yeah, whatever this crank doctor says on Alex Jones must be completely correct. Right. Like, yeah. no, no, you, you apply that same skepticism to people making dramatic claims on that side. Right. You know? Right, because, and, and, and it made me think of the, that famous, I don't know if it's apocryphal quote from Ben Franklin where he emerges from the Constitutional Convention, what did you guys create? It's a, a republic if you can keep it. And, you know, the, the First Amendment and, uh, you know, and the republic that we have built is as much a cultural product and, a, a, and protected by our cultural values as it is by the paper on which the Constitution is written. Like, there, is, there, is a, there are duties and responsibilities that people have. And pe for people like Malone and McCullough to be abusing people's lack of trust with the mainstream media just further undermines. And you know, we, we have been consistently 100% anti-censorship on this and, and, and anti the way that big tech has been handling this situation. But when you have people like McCullough and Malone ab abusing that system, right. that trust, what they're doing is they're creating more fodder for the enemies of free speech who are going to point to this right. and say, look, these people are just liars. Like they're just lying to people who are gullible. And so therefore, we need to crack down on them. Does, that doesn't mean that those calls to you know, censor them and crack down are correct. But you do have to recognize that you're feeding into it. And that's why I say you, we've built a republic if you can keep it. It's everybody's responsibility to help keep it. I agree, but if people who call for them to be censored and then actually censor them are, are in some ways feeding into they their, feeding into their their martyrdom, their victimhood yep. complex, and they're making it seem to other people like, oh, the, the truth is being kept from me. Mm -hmm. They know the truth and is being kept from me. And uh, that's and, what and sucks the, about yeah, this so much because that in, in, it incentivizes the people censoring yeah. to continue censoring, and it incentivizes. Right the Malones and McCulloughs to continue being censored because then they right. become free speech martyrs. Right. There's no incentive to just get things right. Now, make up your own mind. Listen to what they have to say. You should be able to get that information and listen to what Ryan has to say about it. And, and go listen to the whole thing. Go Google sure. Indiana Chamber of Commerce, One America. Like you can find the YouTube clip. I'll, even, I'll send it to the editors so we can put it in here. Go. It's like an hour, hour and a half or so. You can watch it yourself. Well, next up, Rebecca Azor and Rena Shaw will join us for the rising panel. Stick around. <laughs>